Hey Storm fans, it's Brian Cook, and tonight I am joined by the one and only Tony Scaponi. How's it going? Not bad, man. Fantastic. So tonight we're playing the Epic Gamble, a Ruby Storm variant, super powerful. You won a challenge with it last month. Recently, you've been testing out some new changes. Why don't you first give us a quick rundown of this deck and then the changes that you're playing? Um, so basically, the idea is we want to be spinning the wheel with Echo of Aeons multiple times. We're going to be doing it pretty much every game and multiple times every game, almost every game at least. Uh, and to enable that sort of thing, we basically have, yes, Lion's Eye Diamond, Gamble, Echo of Aeons, just a whole lot of redundancy to be able to cast Echo of Aeons consistently. And of course, we have various other action spells and just fast mana. Um, and we have protection in the the form of defense grid quite directly. And relay, I would consider to be both action and protection just because it's so difficult to interact with. I agree 100%. We recently went down a protection spell in the Epic Storm to play main deck relay, and it's actually improved our blue matchups. I, can, I have data that backs that up. <laughs> yep. So. For sure. All right. Um, so but then you asked about changes yeah. right tell me a little bit about this grin monolith and simian spirit guide i'm interested in those okay so the first being grim monolith is not the most recent change spirit guide is but grim monolith directly replaced a two of slot that was manamorphos um that we weren't really 100 percent sold on we just didn't quite know i mean manamorpho manamorphos is pretty uh flexible you can always just slot it in it's never going to be terrible uh, that sort of thing. But Grim Monolith is just has been incredible. Uh, with the Bergy on board, it's a plus two ritual. It's a uh, almost like a one mana ritual, you could think of it as, because we have Soul Land. So it, it it's a ritual with the tap of a Soul Land. I like thinking of it as colorless, desperate ritual in a lot of situations, but you can also store that mana, which makes it a little bit better. Yes. Yeah, you can Grim Monolith pass and then just have a really explosive turn. Uh, you can also reset it, which comes up more often than you might think. And it gives uh, Metalcraft for Mox Opal. So what about the Simeon Spirit Guide? I'll admit, Tony, you know this. I was hesitant because you are a Galvanic Relay deck and a oh. Bergy got a storytelling deck, which means that Simeon Spirit Guide from Exile cannot be exiled from your hand. That's not how magic works. So what are the pros of running the Simeon Spirit Guide? Um, so we really, really, really like having zero cost uh, colored sources, right? Obviously, mostly specifically red. So for all intents and, uh, and purposes, this is pretty much a, a petal for us, um, which is... I can't stress how important that is for us. Oftentimes we're uh, just to give you a common play pattern, right? Where we'll play an LED and echo on an opener and we have a choice to play a land drop, whether it be an ancient tomb or a red source, you know, that being shadow skull, if I, I whatever it is. Um, and I think it always has been correct to play the ancient tomb or the city of traders. You crack the LED for three blue, you use up the colorless, you wind up with two blue. Other than if you played the red source, you'd wind up with one red. I'd rather have red, but I'd rather have two total. And that play comes up a lot. Not the only scenario, but it's something that I love having two more hits to be able to get not only that colored source, but then a total of three mana, which for this deck really is the magic number. We're trying to get up to the number three for Relay, for Bergy. Those are two cards that really, if you get up to them, usually they do the rest. So Simeon Spirit Guide replaced Jessica's Will, which, as you might know, is a three mana card. So again, we want cards that'll get us two three mana rather than costing three mana itself. That makes perfect sense to me. In this sideboard, we we Tony, let's just talk about it. we played a league last week where we had some audio issues. I published that video as a members only video where we played the Epic Gamble. Tony. It was a really good league. We crushed, uh, and we ran four empty in the board. So some people that may be following this channel or even you might know about four empty the Orans. But for those of you that may have missed that video, 
why are you playing for empty tony is it because you love goblins is it because you love storm give us the knowledge uh it's both because i love goblin storm no uh it's it's to bring in three copies uh in game two or game three in post board uh it's almost entirely for delver but really any blue tempo matchup um i bring it in against empty uh basically any any matchup where we where we want to beat counter magic uh and we don't expect a a ton of uh, sweepers do you ever board it in against decks where you expect leyline of the void or does it usually live in the board against those strategies i've brought it in against death just because they have so much including leyline uh, where it's like I th I think it's better I have to take out grid basically and it can be a reasonable card and just hope they don't have a fast uh plague engineer but I'm... sometimes okay uh I don't think I'm all out of questions for you Tony is there anything you would like to cover before we hop into the first match I guess the only thing being reforge the soul so a while back I had cut this card uh, in favor of more bounce spells. And I haven't, I've wanted to give it a really good and honest try having four bounce spells. Uh, but after, I don't know, months at this point, I don't think we need four, right? Uh, our, I think they're the best option as far as removal goes. I think a close second and what we used to run was stuff like um, engineered explosives and blast zone, kind of these colorless options, but obviously they have their own problems. Uh, Void Snare and Echoing Truth. Actually, Bright and I were talking about this a little bit before, and our primary way of dealing with hate is we are extremely fast. We're the second, uh, I think, uh, fastest competitive deck in the format, and the, the our plan A against hate is to just beat it, to just go under it, just win game one and win game three. Uh, obviously, you have Leyline of the Void, which comes down on turn zero, because so that's not 100% the plan. So we do have a plan B, but it's not ideal, right? We're not an is it deck truly. We have a couple of blue-red lands. We have petals. We have opals. But, you know, sometimes there's a collector roof on the board. Like, it's not, it's not perfect. Um, and just based on my own experience and how often we actually use these spells uh, successfully to bounce hate and then win post-bouncing hate, it's not as much as I would like, and it 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 hurts. It pains me, my very ruby red heart, <laughs> to have four slots filled up uh, with such little success. So I wanted to bring something back that recently I have noticed missing, uh, Reforge the Soul, and I'll give you two specific situations that I really miss it, and then we'll go on because we uh, I'm sure we want to jam some magic at this point. But uh, there are points where we we have a ton of mana, the world is our oyster. We've got a grid in play. We've got the game locked up. We've got Burning Wish. Um, but we don't have access to blue or double blue for that mana or, or matter. So we can't Burning Wish into directly into Echo of Aeons. Um, we're not Hellbent. We have multiple lands in our hand, so we can't Burning Wish for Gamble. Like If we have one blue and you're Hellbent, you can just Burning Wish for Gamble to get your Echo out of your deck and cast that. But sometimes, like I said, you can't get Hellbent. And... It, it it kills me when we just we have a, we have a ton of mana we don't have a solid line it's like we have to win this turn so we can't relay empty's not good enough and i just i feel like you deserve a win at that point and if you run reforge the soul you can and a little i'm sure you would love love to do this bryant you can look at their hand it's like a getaxian probe when you have the game locked up when you've drawn your deck you can reforge the soul and look at their hand if we turn one them and we haven't seen what they're on well do it quick enough and uh you can look and see what they're on i do like that that is that sort of sneakiness that i really enjoy tony where can our fans find you if they're looking for more ruby storm the epic gamble content so they can find me on your website the epicstorm.com i've written uh, a couple articles one of which being the epic ruby storm about a year or so back uh and then more recently over a month ago or so we published an article on this very deck, the Epic Gamble. Um, very close to what we're looking at here. Only a couple small changes that we're talking about today. So, uh, But you can also find 
me on my YouTube, my Twitch. Just search Tony Scaponi. That's my name for, for YouTube and Twitch. You can find me lurking uh, in the Storm Discord. Um, All those links will be in the description button. down below. Yes, links will be there. All right, let's hop into match number one and gamble some fools tonight, Tony. This is going to be a blast. Let's do it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number 1, I have the legend Tony Scaponi with me tonight, and we're playing the Epic Gamble. So Tony, here we have a land, we have a Lion's Eye Diamond, defense grid so that means that we can play this turn one defense grid using our chrome mox and uh, eventually we have reckless impulse or bergy this doesn't have a gamble it doesn't have an echo how do you feel about this uh, it is not the fastest hand on its face however we are on the draw and with a lion's eye diamond a chrome mox a land uh it absolutely could be the not just drawing echo either way i'd say it's pretty well rounded and pretty good, so I'd keep. All right. Tony says to keep. I I'm going to get one veto this league, right, Tony, where I get to veto whatever you say? That's how this works? <laughs> no? Well, you're driving, so you can do whatever you want. Stitcher Supplier. Hogak. I was afraid this was Blackheart Reanimator. Right. All right. Another Shatter Skull. So let's Lightning Bolt ourselves here. I think that's a pretty free play. So I imagine we're pitching a Shatter Skull to this uh, Chrome Mox. Yeah, and just play the Impulse. Yeah. Reckless Impulse is such a good card. It is. Okay, okay. so we can hard cast this next turn. I think we're supposed to play out the Diamond to avoid Therapy. Yeah. All right, so we have a grand total of three Storm. But Tony, why don't you discard your hand in Flashback Echo right here? Because it costs six? Yes, that is the answer. <laughs> well, this comes up a lot for new players. They think Echo always casts three. That's not how it works. So Echo has three flashback. This is not in your graveyard. This is the exile zone. It costs six mana. You cannot cast Echo of Aeons. It comes up in a number of videos, so I just figured we call it out. Our opponents played their first creature for the turn, and they now have a Vengevine in the graveyard. There's land number two, so this next creature should trigger Vengevine, and it does. So we're going to take four here, down to 13, and they have a lot of power in play. I'm sorry, five. So if we draw any... Like, we might be able to Bergy into... Oh. Yeah. Um, so I think we bolt ourselves again here. What do you think? 
So how much do they have coming in? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So it wouldn't put us dead unless they put more power on the board. Um, I, I don't think so, because we can draw into a soul land. Okay. Maybe not have to take the three. The three could be relevant, right? Either way, we're dead to another Vengevine. Um, I guess the, true, the punish but... would be a Blood Ghast if they're even playing it. This is the Seder Wayfinder version. I'm not sure if those versions play Blood Ghast, but it's a possibility. It would turn off Ancient Tomb the following turn. This way, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess we can't tap it twice anyways. I think I want the upside of, of getting an additional mana from a soul land. Okay. So we're going to have three blue here. Let's spin that wheel. Okay, so we can islet right of flame. And then unfortunately, this monolith would be all colorless. So a thought here is if we go right of flame gamble for lion's eye diamond and then flashback echo um we could keep going this turn is that what you would do or would you just prepare for next turn well another revenge vine we die they're gonna have they have seven cards so i would I think probably it's pretty reason yeah all right so we're going to 11 right of flame and then we're about to have an 80% chance for success. Can we do it? Oh. Wow. That's rare for you. It is. It's usually in Tomb. I'm quite <laughs> proud. The, the odds were in my favor. Storm 6, Echo of Aeons. Okay. Right. Um, so it's at the bare minimum a Galvanic Relay. I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. I'm just saying... At, at worst. Um, Three, four, five. It'd be nice if we could grape shot into relay, but we can't really. We can, however, play the impulse in front of the relay. Um, yes. Monolith, yeah. Add three. Let's reveal a Lion's Eye Diamond to this. I would really enjoy that. Let's. It's from 11. Okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm I just moving you were this. Play pedal, sorry. No, so we can play Bergy, play Petal. That brings us up to two mana. And then yeah, we get Burning that. Wish, but then we're still one short. Um, yeah. But at least we have this Bergy to next turn. Would be a blocker this turn, which is. But is that worth giving up relay? Probably not. Because then we can't stay hellbent either. Burning Wish is a lot more appetizing when we're hellbent because we could get a gamble into Echo. Um I I mean I think we just I think we just take the relay. Okay, so it's going to be Storm 13 into the Red Necropotence, Galvanic Relay. Can we live? I think the one thing that I like about taking the relay line is that these cards live in exile. We're facing a deck with Cabal Therapy in it, and I don't think that we can rely on this Burning Wish being in our hand on the following turn. Mm. This is true. I always get this complaint in my videos, Tony. I don't like it when the cards are popped out like this, uh, but I'll do it because it makes people happy. <laughs> well yeah do you do it when you add nauseam I, well i don't i like the column view but people say that they don't enjoy it um yes th that they'd rather I, I have can, it like this i can second that i've seen I, I i'm now reminiscing in the past watching you add nauseam and then click the little arrow and then add nauseam some more and then click the little arrow So what I do when I add nauseum is I just hit the three button for yes a lot until I realize that I have a dangerous life total and then I stop. Um, yeah, but the viewers want to see the cards. Yeah, they want to see the flips. I understand, but uh, 
sucks to suck. I don't know. Um, well, our opponent has a Vengevine in the graveyard, Tony. Uh, I'm a little bit af afraid right now. So this is a second Faithless Looting. If they cast a creature here, uh, what is an Undead Butler? When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. When it dies, you can exile it, return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. I can't even believe it. I thought for sure they were casting creature. I thought it was going to be creature and a Hogak, if I'm being honest. Maybe mm. they have a green lightning bolt here. <laughs> they might. But also, but like that... one of the things I dislike about this is this echo is in exile. This actually isn't one of the Galvanic Relay uh, things. Yeah, that's just Moto being Moto. Oh, no. Simeon Spirit Guide is in exile. It's not where it belongs. That monkey's never going to get cast. I'm going to refuse to cast it, even if you want to. All right, so we're going to go to two here. And play the Berg. All right, and now we cast Rite of Flame. We're going to auto-yield to this trigger, Tony. You can't stop me. I won't allow it. I'm not going to click that many times. Right of flame. It irritates me when people don't. Okay. And then I think we can play Colorless Dark Ritual here. Yep. It's from four. Um, why don't we... Hmm. I'm going to Reckless Impulse. It's like pretty free. Sure. Costs a single colorless mana. We can play Volk. Now we have a blue source. So yeah, now we can just play Horn and ditch our hand and gamble for Echo. Might as well we probably put a grid in front of it. There's a diamond. Do we still want to discard the Wish? Because uh, we're pretty close to Tendrils already. Oh yeah, there's a diamond. You can just cast some spells and kill him. Okay, so let's play a defense grid here. And then Burning Wish into Tendrils of Agony. And you don't even have to hold control, thanks to Bergy. Oh no, Bergy. I hold control. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Tony, but if you don't hold control, it's going to create bad mechanics for when you're not playing the Epic Gamble. No, I'm just... I'm just telling the uh the viewers that they have additional uh insurance bergy is all about rebates and insurance <laughs> all right so uh looks like we took a gamble in one game number one versus hogak 80 <laughs> percent. i like those odds all right, so we probably don't need Defense Grid because Hogak is traditionally a deck that doesn't play Mind Break Trap. So it's like pretty free to leave in one, I think, with your current list. But if I had a guess, Tony, uh, I would probably board something like this because I don't think Empty's that good. And I don't think we want to board in anything else. So I think we leave one Defense Grid for an Insurance and then board like this. Am I wrong or do you I'll leave a Void Snare now? For wish in case they have ley line and then leave in two grids no I, I bring all the bounce spells in okay and leave one one grid like you're saying they do have I, I mean they don't really play traps the the most frequent thing is ley line of the void but uh force of vigor is probably the most frequent if we had thought about boarding out a Lion's Eye Diamond, we could wish for it right now. How often do you board out Lion's Eye Diamond, Tony? 0.00% of the time. I'm guessing we're keeping this hand. Um, it seems reasonable to me. Um, That's actually not the greatest. Well, we're going to turn one Reckless Impulse into Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, we probably will. Or we can just That's hit Lotus Petal for Metalcraft. No big deal. Wow. Um, so I like imprinting the Wish. Wish. And I think we want to hold our land. Um, 
for the reckless i guess we could play it and well, then we have an extra red source available yeah yeah i, I would play it because we we've got some serious color uh color requirements ahead of us i think relay for five i'd take that uh yeah could get risky galvanic relay English for gamble but i think this is the, the better play yeah me too Oh, and our opponent has so conceded good. the game? <laughs> Shame. All right, Tony, we're 1 0. Do you think we're going to 5 0 this? I know we are. Wow, you heard it here. Tony's calling the shot. 5 0. Stick around, find out. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Tony Scaponi called a 5-0. We're facing Tim, who's well known for playing one of two decks, blue mid-range piles. In fact, uh, Tim revitalized the whole Breacher Narset uh, deck that sees a lot of play now, the, the four color control one. Uh, Tim won a challenge with that. And then the last few months have just been people iterating on that list. And then Tim has also played a lot of sneak and show variants. That said, I'd be willing to bet that Tim is playing a blue deck tonight. So knowing that our opponent's playing a blue deck, how do you feel about this opening hand? Are there wastelands involved? Not usually. It's just a four-color control deck. Either way, even if there were, I'd like it. It just, depending on that, decides what uh, what land we play first. Gotcha. Um, I think life total is not an issue in this matchup. So if that helps. Uh... I was going to say play Shatter Skull tapped if they don't play Wasteland. I suppose there's one to two possible, but I'd probably still do it, right? It's not our only red source. So I, what I would be doing is looking to leverage this relay. So I wouldn't be like looking to gamble or anything like that. I'd probably be trying to Reckless no. Impulse on turn two. Yep. Ooh. I'd still Impulse Yeah, I'd personally. still, yeah. Because, like, we could hit more spells into the relay. Ooh. So, we could relay right now. How do you feel about that? We can go pedal, chromox, and print the gamble. And that would be relay for one, two, three, four. Is four worth it? I. I think I would do it personally. Yeah, just because I'm afraid of Narset. I was kind of hoping we'd hit, like, Rituals. You heard it here first. Be... Tony Scaponi's afraid of Narset. His words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be like, oh, that Brian Cook is such an asshole. And, yeah. <laughs> All right, four cards coming off the top rope. Ancient Tomb. Burning Wish. Lion's Eye Diamond, Echo of Aeons. And it could have been better. Two, four, six. I mean, we have front and backside Echo. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, I'd really like to draw a defense grid. Brainstorm. Actually, it's probably better to cast. Let's see what we draw. LED? Oh. Uh, these draws They're have probably, not been very good. Um, no, I'd probably play the Ancient Tomb. So I think instead of like front and backsiding an Echo, because that will just get stomped by a Force of Negation, we could Burning Wish. Or Gamble. And it'll pro probably resolve, and we'll get Echo, and then Burning Wish again, uh, and crack our LED and resolve a Relay, and then we'll have an Echo in our yard. Okay. Um, is there any thought here? And this could just be a terrible line, but is there any thought to burning wishing for gamble for a grid? 
I mean, if it hits, that's pretty good, but I feel like it's an unnecessary gamble. Yeah, I guess the problem with this, I don't know if we're doing after that either, because um, I, I was just counting the red mana. So you use this for burning wish, this for gamble. You don't have a blue for another burning or for echo or another red for burning wish into this echo. So how would you like to sequence this? Um, start on ancient tomb. Yeah, ancient tomb, burning wish. Okay, let's move these over here. So that resolved. Um, and you said you want to get Echo here? Yeah. Okay. So then we play this Lion's Eye Diamond. The yeah. problem I, I see with this line, and it's not the end of the world, but if we had played Islet... Um, yeah, I'm now realizing, yeah, we don't have the writ. So if they... Because we have to crack this... If they counter Burning Wish, then we're not going to have Blue to flash back the Echo. Even now, we're, well, I wouldn't do it. You're holding priority right now, right? I am. Yeah, you can see it. Um, um, so it might be worth... Yeah, we put ourselves in a weird spot. So go for... Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, the ancient tomb here was a little awkward. Uh, actually, I guess it didn't matter because... I guess it never mind, that's not true, because if they force the burning wish we could echo. So we could just not crack lines eye diamond. Get gamble. Yeah, and then I think I like that. Pass. The fear with this line is uh the curb we're afraid of, right? Yeah. But they they, they totally don't have that card. Right? No. I mean it's not an ideal situation. I definitely Screwed up by not looking at the colors, right? Tundra. This is a good sign. Dress down. Oh, sorry. I thought it was their turn. Nope. I looked down for a second. Never look down, Tony. You only look <laughs> up. Prismatic Vista. Don't do it. Aww. Oh. All right, punished for ponder. Um, so I guess we could get horn with this gamble. Yikes, it's a lot of lands. How do you feel about that line? Just getting horn and then discarding four cards. Well, either way, we're definitely gambling. So, yeah. Either that or like, uh, I'm sorry, it would hmm. be three cards, so it wouldn't be four. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything else that they would counter as well. Like, would they counter an impulse? Probably not, but we'd only get two looks. Would they counter a Bergy? I just. I guess the life total doesn't matter too much. Yeah, go for it. All right, Bergy, straight to the graveyard, right where she belongs, <laughs> right? Uh, yep. Do we play a land here? Might as... Uh, yeah. We play guess... City, no, then we're no. just not playing any more lands. Have to pass. feel like we're about to get uh, wheeled. Probably. We dug our own grave with this one, and by we, I mean me. Don't beat yourself up. I was the one clicking. Yeah. It's all my fault. It always is. Why'd you do it? The fairy. Traveling through time. Arriving through time. What are words? Supreme Verdict. Okay, right of flame. Maybe we just pass. So a winning game for us at this point is drawing Galvanic Relay and then chaining those. 
Um, not super probable, but that's what we have to work with. Volcanic Island. I think we just pass here. Are we getting Drusta? Okay. Drusta Ponder. No, I think they might be like days and doing. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like uh, yeah. there's a lot of players that like it happens all the time. Oh, I shouldn't say all the time. It's happened a couple of times where people think that it just like ends the turn. Obviously, uh, with when you after you've drawn with Narsa, you don't get the card from uh, days and doing. So like that's why you do it the way that Tim has done it here. But there's been people that have like talked to me in chat. They're like, why didn't the turn end? Yeah, like it specifically says on the card, like if it's your turn. Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty broken if it just ended the turn. Time twister and time walk. Pretty good. And mind twist. Draw another echo. <laughs> Perfect. There's the breacher. Okay, so we're falling to eleven here. Draw. It's something. Reckless impulse. Probably one of the best draws. Worse negation. Pass the turn. Snapcaster. Instant speed ponder. It's like a blue player's dream. So this is five. Next turn, assuming they don't have another creature, it'd be another five. Although I don't know if two draw steps can save us here. Do we get to concede? Okay. I guess we got to see that they have Shark Typhoon, though. All right, Tony, what is the sideboard plan for this? So I like empty. I mean, I'm pretty sure they run some number of Pyroclasm or something like that, but especially with all these Narset effects, we just, it's, uh, I think it's good. All right, well, what comes out? Because we're not boarding out Defense Grid. If I had to take a wild guess, I think that we probably cut the Grim Monoliths, even though those do help cast empty. Um, I'm not really sure what else is cuttable. Like maybe the Simeon Spirit Guides, but those also accelerate into empty. It's kind of a conundrum. Uh, I definitely kept the wish because we're bringing in more win cons and the card is just generally clunky. Uh, I haven't quite figured out now that I've cut two cards. It's And Jessica's Will was the card I was often cutting, which was kind of a red flag for me that it should go out of the deck anyways. But um, I've been trimming a, a little bit. I think a Grim Monolith is fine or one of the Simeon Spirit Guides or even a Reckless Impulse because we are bringing in three expensive pieces of action, so I think Impulse makes sense. How's this? I like leaving in the Simeons for the empty. Yeah, they're, they'll help. For sure. Jose, just, it's, on, it's, it's near impossible for them to figure out what to counter when we can be sandbagging a soul land and we can have Simeons. Yeah. Game two on the play. I don't think we're allowed to keep this. Am I wrong? No. It looked so good. Down to six. Uh, this is another close one. I think we're supposed to go to five. This doesn't do anything. No, we need. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Like we bottom the monolith pretty easily. The question is, what's the next card? So my thought process, we have to keep Ancient Tomb Grid. Like, do we just have to? And then from there, you have Chromox, which gives you your red source when you imprint Rite of Flame, theoretically. And that turns on Burning Wish, but the Burning Wish would, would have to um, get a gamble for the Echo. So like, none of this really works. Uh, I think you're actually supposed to bottom the Rite of Flame and just accept that you have to draw a good card. Or at least a red card. Yeah. Because Chromox is our, our red source. But yeah, I like that. 
All right, this uh, game was not a well. This mulligan was not ideal. Defense grid. No, oh, but this grid should undo it a little bit at least. Worst pitching Dak Faden. Okay, we're getting spicy. Prismatic Vista. Draw. Okay. Use lightning bolt ourselves here. Burning Wish. I imagine we're getting Gamble. Is that what you would do? Um, it's either that or Relay if we want to wait. It's your call. Yeah, I get Gamble. All right, pass the turn. The Vista makes me a little bit nervous because it could represent a Pyroblast. How often in your experience do people side in Pyroblast against you? Not often, no. They think it's too narrow. But, and, you know, probably not correct to bring in max Pyroblast, but... And they did not shuffle off the ponder. Now they're burning wish. Do we just go get relay here? With the burning wish? Uh, one, two. Like they kept off the mm -hmm. ponder, so it feels risky just going LED echo. Yeah, but we don't have enough to. Uh, yeah. To relay. And we kind of want a Burning Wish into the relay. Yeah, you could just... Yeah, I guess we just cast Burning Wish. Okay, I don't want to force your plays. If you want to gamble for LED, let's do it. No. I don't. All right, Burning Wish. You didn't even get... You know what? Get Echo. But what if they play a nurse on turn three? I mean, I think we're far enough behind where Okay. We pretty much just scoop to it. But this way we can threaten a, a double echo next turn. There's land three. I think she's coming. And there she yeah. is. Days and doing. Alright. Um so I have a question for you, Tony. We've pretty obviously lost this. Um, have you put any thought with all these days in doing Narset decks being as popular as they are to playing some copies of Pyroblast on the board? We we do not have as hard a time in this matchup as this match has made it okay. seemed. Jeskai TG has a very difficult time, but we tend to go under it. I believe that. Like, our draws this match were not very good. Uh, if you're okay, I'm going to concede here. Well, plus we just punted the, the first game. Yeah, I mean, what did they get off the Narset? Days Undoing. Oh. Yeah, is there any all-in play that we could just go for right now? I guess if we, if we write a flame that's... So we can't come up with three red, right? So we can't... Rape shot feasibly. We could go right a flame gamble for relay. Chrome Mox relay. Yeah, go for it. Gamble. Or you know what? Gamble for empty. And we have a 50 50 shot. The Chrome Mox would also have to resolve, or they're just going to force this. That's true, but they don't get to see the, the empty. All right, I'm fine with it now, if you want to scoop. Okay. Unfortunately, we're one and one. Sad tears. All right, match number three coming up. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot. 
everyone's favorite storm wind condition a galvanic relay exile indicator four treasure tokens for strike it rich and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends it also has slime time live Ave Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels versus Goblins, Chatterstorm versus Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel Tokens and 20 Goblin Tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three, we have won the die roll. Tony, I know it sucks to lose a match, but let's bounce back. We are not allowed to keep this. We got a ship. Okay, so here we have a turn one defense grid into Reckless Impulse. Is that something we're interested in, or do we want to go to five? We would bottom the relay, I think. I like the... Uh, I don't like love the hand, but it's okay. I wouldn't go with a turn one grid. I think we want to save the spirit guide for like a Bergy. I think we want to hope we're against the blue deck and just kind of play it slower. All right, turn one Cheddar Skull. Pass the turn. Misty Rainforest. Defense grid. And that resolved. What are you playing? Who knows? They could just, you know, have a pending. Is it Maverick? I feel like taking the risk. This Krakus is pretty good against the Berg. Prismatic ending, okay. So we could play Bergy. Shatter, we could go Shatter Skull Smashing, Bergy, Diamond, Reckless Impulse Floating 1. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. All right. So let's play the Berg. Okay. Lines of Diamond. Seeming Spirit Guide Exile. Reckless Impulse. Getting one red mana. That's a bummer. Do we just keep this in exile until next turn in case we draw a relay? Yeah. Yep. We can also draw a card next turn off the Fiery Islet, but I have to imagine they're going to bounce our Bergy. Yeah. Maybe not, though, because, like, we could replay it as Horn. I'm not sure. I think they'd be crazy not to unless they... Oh. Okay. There's that, too. That's a bummer. Grid... Defense grid. So if this resolves, we're immediately sacrificing this fire eyelet to hope to spike a gamble or echo itself. Brainstorm. All right, so grid does it resolve? It does. Okay, come on, deck. Please be good to us. We have seven hits here, Tony. Is that accurate? I believe six. Three echo, three, three gamble. You're correct. Yeah. yeah all right. I mean, it's it, the it, worst draw. Yeah, it's fine. Now, Burning Wish, you can add that to the list of cards that are very strong here. Sylvan, so they're giving us a window. Oh, they might have pending. Well, no? you, you don't want to jinx it. <laughs> uh, so, abundant growth in, in the deck without having Yurian interesting uh all right another grid pass and i like playing the grid there because we could hold it and try to play it later for like a relay turn but what if you don't draw relay and you draw gamble and now that defense grid is eating up mana on your combo turn we also know that it's going to resolve this turn so now a single ending doesn't turn their counter magic back on yep that damn narset um that's not nice. A Wandering Emperor. So I guess if we draw Burning Wish, we try to empty? I have to mm. pass the turn here. I want to say I'd probably just hold on to a Burning Wish if we drew it. 
Okay. Up to five mana. I mean, we're getting kind of close to Tendril's range, too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, at this point, you hold cards in hand for Horn or Relay. The Fairy picks up a grid. So that's actually that's a good. storm in case we draw Burning yeah. Wish and ending the other. Okay. Come on, Burning Wish off the top. Expressive Iteration. Ah. Yikes. Would you play the grid here or would you hold it? I'd hold it. We're not out of this yet. So they put two cards back. And they plus to fairy. D another grid. Do we just pass here? I'm a little bit worried about a twister effect, but if they haven't played one yet. Yeah, it is what it is. The Wandering Emperor, sure. Sylvan. They put two cards back. They're up to seven lands. We're going to take two here down to 16. We have a number of hits. We just need to draw something. Draw. Uh, it's a blocker. It attacks an set. Um, it's a monkey. I mean, I just think we hold it. I don't know. Yeah. Actually surprising just how little our draw steps have yielded action just in general tonight. Yeah. I have nights like that. It happens. Press of iteration. I was thinking about if we drew gamble and not burning wish, how would you sequence it? And I came to the conclusion of I think I would go Grig Grig Gamble. Uh and I wouldn't gamble first. Because one, the gamble could get countered. And two, uh, I think we just need the grids in play to not lose. Uh, yeah. Draw. I'm in for that. Speaking of <laughs> the card, okay. So let's play this grid. They could let it resolve if they have a single force because uh, they could pay for the follow-up. Looks like they're just going to counter. Okay. Grid. The only problem... Uh, we have to use Rite of Flame or Spirit Guide here. Otherwise, we don't have enough to Burning Wish. So, In fact, I mean... Uh, it's seven. I'm trying to think here. So if we go Rite of Flame, it's Storm 5. Gamble would be six. We'd actually have to pitch the... We have a 50-50 chance of winning right now. You don't have to... You, you just got to do one or the other, right? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we have to do both. You're right. Yeah. So it's a 50-50 chance. Yeah, go for it. There's another card that we lose to, but I'm not going to say it out loud. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I was like, yeah, I can do it later, and I just realized that it changes the math. Ah, oh, damn. I screwed that up. Well, it was, gam it was in too many way. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. <laughs> Even with better odds. <laughs> this is what happens when I play Gamble. I guess we'll just... Honestly, I, I, I think we were supposed to wait a turn. Okay. Because it would give us another... Another card in hand. I don't think it really changed too much as far as what they had. But having said that, it's seven. I mean, Burning Wish is still a good draw here. I don't think it quite does it. No, it does. No, eh, no, it doesn't. We could hard cast Simeon, Mox Opal, Burning Wish, and be one mana short. Yeah. Okay, so we go to six here. Draw. Doesn't do it. All right. Yeah, they can just bounce our blocker. 
That was a, a, a tough one. All right, so you want to board in three empty, shave an impulse? No, no. I wouldn't board in the empty. You, you can. It's reasonable against these multiple color decks. Uh, only if you're running the full four, because I think you're, you really want it in your opener. Otherwise, later on, it's not that good. It's not going to race Uro. Which is generally speaking, I think. Okay. I don't know. I think either way is defensible, but you can't do it on the draw, and you can't do it if you don't have the full set of empty. And even then, I think I don't love doing it. So what's the plan here, then? What, as far as sideboarding? Yep. Zero. Hit that submit button. Mm-hmm. I will say, generally speaking, I beat on these blue control decks. I was thinking, and I know that you said that, like, you don't feel like the need for Pyroblast, but it would be a really good gamble target, as a, even as a one of. Um, just some food for thought. You might find that it's not necessary, but just throwing it out there that it seems like a pretty good tutor target. Yeah, it wouldn't be terrible. Or it wouldn't it wouldn't be bad. It would be good. Like you could maybe try one tight. over grid four, or you could just well, play a fifth act or like a fifth protection spell. I'm not sure. Shatter Skull comes up quite a bit in these matchups. Where they have to decide do they really want to use their force on our Shatter Skull smashing? Keep. Keep, 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 and keep, is keep. Pretty good. I think I'm going to try to get them to force a Rite of Flame. Do they force this one? Ah, uh, they didn't bite. All Don't right. even have to tap the Ancient Tomb. Yeah, tapping Ancient Tombs for suckers. Alright, so six fresh cards. Ooh, that's a really good six. See, there's a... Ooh, there's two grid, wow. And they pass the turn. That's where Summoning Spirit Guide belongs, right there. Right, let's just play the grid. You could play the Grim Monolith, but if it gets forced, you'd feel like a real dummy. Um, and you can always play the Monolith after. Let's exile the Spirit Guide. Let's add some blue mana. Play the Monolith. Tap Monolith. Add some blue. Play Echo. Storm 4. You're actually one shy of peering there. Yeah, alright. Um, Wait, I think This we... is just a win with Wish. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, we also have a horn into Echo, but... Do we win, or do we win? I think Which one we do you want to do. I think we actually win. Um, no, I, no, I was gonna say win. <laughs> I think <laughs> Tony's referring to the fact that we could peer and play our entire deck. Um, actually, I was referring to Horn Echo, but yeah, uh, also peer. <laughs> there's all... a, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat or something like that, right? Like, who doesn't love skinning cats? Is that what we're trying to say here? That you heard it here. You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was game number two. We won that one. People in the comment section are not going to like that joke. <laughs> Brian Cook says he likes to skin cats. So you'll notice, like, game one here, they did the same thing where they let grid resolve. And usually that just means they're going to have a bad time. I think we keep this. Am I wrong? Um. Yeah. When it took some a mulligan. Tropical. Into That's Panda. Ideal, ideally you want either grid or a relay hand. But Bergy's pretty serious. 
Draw. It's, it's well it's well rounded. That's pretty good. Um I just want to think through this. So we could play city, but then we have metal well we do have metal craft. Um so we could back half Bergy on turn one. How do you feel about that? Kind of blow everything, huh? Yeah, but we have Burning Wish for Echo next turn. Yeah, but then that's like not only does it blow a lot of stuff, but then it also we're going to be sacrificing our city next turn. I'll do whatever you want to do, but if I was playing on my own, I would be putting a horn on the stack. I think I want to put a Bergy into play. The only thing is, see, it's awkward because I ideally you want to set up for a relay, but if you want to play Bergy this turn, you got to play things out. We could play it pretty slow and just play Shatter Skull. That would be the most explosive turn two. Provided, even if they counter a Bergy next turn, then we can drop everything and we saved our city. And it's like the same as... Because put it this way, I I think, I, they I think the force. fear is if you play Bergy next turn and they allow it to resolve, the Burning Wish is just such a big force target and then your hand is nothing. Not if we draw like any piece of action. Because with Bergy in play, it's... They, they're, I don't think they're going to let it resolve. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna counter it. In which case we didn't have to spend five. Alright, so Especially you just wanna go Shatter Skull Pass? Time, yeah. Okay. The the hammer pass, to be more specific. Flooded strand. Sylvan. Four cards. You like Draw. to see that. Ooh. Yes, that's exactly what we wanted. Play the Berg. <laughs> All right. Next up, a say, diamond. People let Bergy resolve way too often. So how are you sequencing now? Like, uh, we could just Burning like Wish? A, just a double echo. So I just go right of flame. And then, I I mean, you could Burning Wish before. I guess it doesn't. Well, like, if Burning Wish resolves, we can also just get Relay. We can. Yeah, they counter it. And then we just gamble for Echo. Two cards left in the opponent's hand. Grab an Echo. And yeah, uh, this is not. the point in the video where Tony sings uh, that you spin me right round song. <laughs> All you right. can just imagine me. I think we gamble again. This time we get Echo, and then, then on the second gamble we get Grid. I like that. You could even get Relay on the second, but that'd be kind of the coward's play. This isn't really a coward video right no no we're we're, we're going big ah <laughs> um so we can't hard cast the echo so we're dead to a force um what would you like to do we can hard cast it next turn but yeah we're walking into narset but we do have shatter skull and we have a three three we can i think we play the simian i'm not even monkey joking into play <laughs> I am creature, hear me roar. Hiya. Also, like once again, gamble is in tomb. I am really good at that. Yeah, you're pretty good at it. This is where they just miracle terminus and uh I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> He's no coward, but he is not threatening, folks, so don't worry. With his gambles. Ah, <laughs> uh, the bird died. She paid the price for gamble sins. All right, they slept six cards. Yeah, but they did shuffle the ponder. So Get in there. Healthy. Get them. We're an aggro deck. Are they really F6 straight now? 
Wow. I would tap the pedal. I would sack the no instead of tapping what? eyelet. I'd rather have the draw, the card draw. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna and sack for three blue. I'm gonna keep one LED in play in case it's just. Uh... You wanna sack uh... both? Okay. They're no longer of six. And it resolves. All right, nice. so. You. I'm gonna gamble. Do I get grid? Could get a relay. So it, grid would lose to an endurance uh, or a surgical. Or double, or double force, but I think they would have used it then, although I wouldn't totally count it out. People do wild things. I feel like grid is. I don't know. I feel like it should be grid, just because, like, relay, I don't know. Maybe it should just be relay. Like, relay is definitely the safer line. It is, but as we have gone over before, this is not a coward stream. Show them your gamble skills. Okay. Hmm. Grid is on the stack. Horse pitching ponder. All right, now we imprint the shatter skull, exile, spin that wheel. All right, echo. Um, a lot of business. Do I just play grid gamble? You also just like play uh, Bergy. Yeah. And that way, that way, defense grid doesn't get um, endinged. How do you feel about the Bergy this turn? Well, we could Bergy pass. Yeah. Then they're on tapping with. Yeah, and then they'll probably tap under grid. They're afraid of our hill giants. Yeah, I mean, five power. The Simeon Spirit Guide, it's threatening. I've uh, definitely won games in my life with Simeon Spirit Guide beats. I remember uh, I was playing in a tournament probably like 2008 or 2009, and uh, I brainstorm locked myself back when I only played five color lands, and my hand was triple right of flame, uh, like double Simeon Spirit Guide, and I just put two Simeons into play and it won. Nice. Uh, Energy Flux is kind of a stinker. Yeah. I think we just let these go. What do you have to pay? One or two? Two. Yeah. Alright, draw. The Berg! So... We could play Bergy into Gamble for LED. And if it doesn't hit LED or grid then we can play grid yeah i think that's the line into echo so many forces holy moly um so how do you feel about now we... gambling yeah two cards yeah do we want to wait or do we want to do it now probably now right because they have no some other yeah. okay storm five this does not relay. Son of a gun. All right, yeah. pass the turn. Silver lining is Simeon Spear Guide almost has them dead. Do we have any echoes left in the main deck? I think that's all three. It is. Yeah. Well, luckily we drew into a relay hand, so... Still have an engine going. Still have an echo in the board. I'm just going to point out, they're at 8 life, which is a divisible of 4. Yep. Lavinia? We can still play spells into her. And also, like, I'm going to attack, because they're not blocking. Hiya. Um, yeah, but do we want to attempt to... How much magic? We have 2, 4, 6... Wow, they... So we have 2, 4, 6 mana. We could cast... Burning Wish, if they don't counter it, please don't wait. 
We can cast Burning Wish. If they don't counter it, we can like play a spell and then put three Grape Shot on Lavinia. Honestly, we don't... like I don't know why we do that. Like, we... so this is three. If Burning Wish resolves, we can grab empty and we can just empty for a bunch. Um, I don't know. Or we can just relay. Four six. Oh, you're right. Like the grape shot line. Could relay. I don't like. I'm just. I'm just not in love with. I. I mean, I was just playing it out in my head to see if the mana worked, and I just don't love throwing away a bunch of zeros. You could impulse. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about empty. I mean. And if if Bush gets forced, then relays for a bunch. Yeah. Oh. Opal. Oh no, it was countered. Vinny is such a lame Oh card. no, we can't empty. We can't. Here we can. City's no, City's gonna get sacrificed before we can put it on the stack, and then you can't cast it through Lavinia. Oh wow. So we're gonna We will at the relay. Not that that's the end of the world. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think of that. I am mm. showing my inexperience here. Yeah, I don't think of it till. It, it's a I nice can't. backup. It's fine. Um. So if that's the case, I think we play Volk this turn. Ah, uh, sure. It stinks. Yeah, Whoops. make red. My bad. It's a red spell, Brent. Oh, is that how magic works? Thank you. Ah, jeez. Relay for six. Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Shatter Skull. Chrome Mox. Defense Grid. Opal. So it's an empty next turn. Uh, that's how it looks at least right now. I guess the one silver lining is they're pretty far away from an arrow. Just throwing that out there. What do you mean? Like they have two cards in their graveyard. Well, I mean, empty's not gonna. Empty could definitely not get there arrow. if they draw. If they draw an arrow, you'd be surprised. I've lost the arrow too many times to. Where I had the false confidence. All right, draw. Oh, it's a pretty big empty though. I didn't realize we had that many. All right, so I think we play Tomb here. The problem is that if we try to play the grid, uh, one, they have six mana, but two, we actually don't have enough mana to empty. Right. And you could get really greedy and try to Shatter Skull Smashing, but like I think that's a big trap. Yeah. At least, like, we're not dead in the water. If the empty doesn't pan out, we do have... Like, the impulse is pretty good. Just having a grid in hand isn't, you know, for nothing. Ten goblins. I'm going to counter one or something. Yeah. That's good news. I mean, if you have a sweeper, you don't do this, right? Yeah. But they're going to double force? <laughs> Love it. Perfect. We're going to get this game is going to end with like a grape shot for two or something. <laughs> oh, they think better of it. They're going to hold they their pay one life? Like they showed us the force there. They did. And then they didn't play okay. it. Interesting. Can't forget about this energy flux behind our sideboard. I think they didn't do it because they were dead on board to the goblins if they did. But now they're doing it anyway. So if this is Uro, then they put a fetch land into play. Expressive. In regards to covering up the energy flux with the sideboard, that's the thing about trash is if you cover it up, it's it's still there and it's going to wind up stinking. So you might as well, <laughs> you know, keep it up front. Ending on a goblin, so that does buy them a turn. Another ending, okay. Or a creature deck. Where's the Simeon Spear Guide when you need one? 
Oh my god. Is the game gonna end for with a grape shot for well? I think we just play it. impulse here. Yeah. It's so, wow, they left in so much creature removal. They're gonna take four down to three. Okay. I'm gonna leave the red up. Um I don't think our life total matters that much. Um <sighs> I guess we can wait until next turn to do this. We don't have to do it now. That's true. Do we want to? The benefit, of course, is we don't have to pay for this gamble next turn if we do it now. Like, what we would want Burning Wish? Yeah. So it's uh, a 66% chance. Yeah, I'd say just go for Burning Wish. Hey, we did and it. The question, is, the question is, do we cast it? Well, we know that they have force. Um, let's do it. Yeah, just make them use up two cards. All right, we're going to go get Grape Shot. Yeah. Shots. I said this game would end in a Grape Shot for two. They're looking for a miracle here. We know that their last card was Force, and they uh, didn't force the Burning Wish. I am, like, genuinely surprised at how many sorts of plowshares our opponent left in. <laughs> so what's the abundant growth? They're looking for a miracle draw off that? I guess they could have gotten rid of the Force off the Brainstorm. On the pre on our on our end step, this brainstorm. The wandering emperor. Okay, that doesn't. They gain two. Oh, uh, they gain life. Apparently, if they, they have one card. Uh, oh wow! So now we have to draw something. No, we just have it. Uh, we attack yep. them for two, put them to three. Okay. I was wrong. Game's gonna end in a grape shot for four. For three. For four. I think we're gonna go small here. Oh, oh, I didn't see it. I forgot about the chrome ox. Grid. Get out of here, Lavinia, you piece of trash. What a nerd. Boom. Grape shots. What a delicious flavor. Love it. That was a sweet match. Had it the whole time. We are now two and one. Two rounds left to go. That wasn't even English. Two rounds left to go. <laughs> hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Alright, match four. Our opponents revealed uh, this Yorian card. I think we keep... Because this hand uh, has the possibility of turn one wish, but it's also just like a hand with rituals in action versus likely death and taxes. And I'm a big fan of just emptying them quickly. Another reckless impulse. Um, one shy though, right? So the chromox into this is four six. Yeah, we're one shy. Um, so we could imprint the wish and then and double take that. reckless impulse. I like that. Yeah. Get out of your wish. Right of flame. Right of flame. Reckless impulse. Reckless Let's impulse. Play an ancient temple. Um. That could have been better. Yeah. No action. I wouldn't play these. Oh, uh, because I was thinking. So we'd have mana down before Thalia. Yeah. Um. Uh, I still don't think I would. We don't need the grid. 
If they play Thalia, we're probably not really playing anything anyway, so we can just, like, have a Vulcan play, you know? Okay. That was worst case scenario, I think. That was just terrible. Agreed. Like, I guess we could have played Burning Wish into Relay, but it would have revealed that trash anyway. So, like, it, playing Wish into Relay was the same as just going double Impulse. Yeah. No Thalia. Interesting. Oh. Um, one, two, three, four... We can go Islet, sack it, draw, and then we can go Chromox and still cast the Burning Wish. Yeah, we almost have enough to echo. Three, four, five. We are one shy. Ah, uh, yeah, I go for... Uh, they don't have Thalia. What the hell? They have no two drops. So what are we fearing? A bunch of stuff, I guess. They have 80 cards. <laughs> but we're not... Like, the three drops aren't as scary, so I guess that's that's a good thing. So you're going to crack the eyelet and hope we hit... Uh, that's what like I would do. LED or something? No, you can just play Chromox and then the Opal's live. So you can Burning Wish no matter what. Oh, just trying to get value to actually imprint something on the Chromox? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. All right, draw... Perfect. Ugh. Tony, we're really good at this. <laughs> We've certainly been rolling low. This is one of the ways you lose the DNT. It's it, like if you have these slower hands or if you just get unlucky and hit nothing and lose game one, it's tough to it's tough to pull off two post board games. I I'm thinking we get gamble here. Do you agree? Yeah. So next turn we can go Ancient Tomb, Defense Grid, Gamble for Echo, and then we're one mana short of Echo. Yeah. Saga. Maybe we should have played Grid instead of Burning Wish. Because we're going to have to get it out of our hand with a Gamble Okay, that means anyways, that we can do it that now. That was a good draw. Yep. So you got to... We well, have to tap the Opal first. Play Opal... Gamble. So you're saying there's a chance. Echo? Don't do it. Don't do it. I wasn't going to say it. No! Yeah. All right, we can move on here. Uh, I knew it was a possibility, but I don't get is why they just didn't put it into play on turn two. Um... Like, this was cute, and I, I appreciate how cute it was. They probably drew into it. I don't know. You definitely play it on turn. You don't hold it. Um, do We don't board in the group shot, do we? No, we need some sort of removal in our board. That was unfortunate. Honestly, I, I prefer to play into Mind Break Trap. Uh, unless we have a hand that can play around it, you know. Just because it's generally much, much more difficult to, like, you know, you, you, I don't want to answer Deafening Silence. I want to just kill them on the first turn. Well, uh, I'm going to let you solve how to kill them on their turn zero before they can cast... Uh... Deafening silence, Tony. Have you considered ley line of anticipation? They're also <laughs> there. You go. They're also running ley lines, which is a pain in the ass now. All right. Um, I mean, another thing you could do, and I used to do this with uh, Black Belcher, the Epic Storm, is side and empty, and just be like, okay, beat twelve goblins on the play. Yeah, you could. Uh, so Simeon Spear Guide, Rite of Flame. Burning Wish into Echo. This, yeah, this Grim Monolith is a little bit awkward. Um, yeah. Because this would just be an empty. Right of Flame. So we're not, we're not going to Burning Wish. We're going to gamble because it costs less. And it's going to do the same thing. I guess it has a small chance of playing into 
graveyard interaction, but I feel like the one man is worth it. Gamble. I mean, you might you... be wondering, like, no, they have seven cards. Why would you? They must have the the trap, but it's not true. Like, they have a deafening silence hand. They're not going to mull it on seven. You know. It's from four. And if you've got it, you've got it. Let's go. No need to posture. Okay. Yep, I see this a lot. And it's good. I used to think bringing surgical against me was bad. But for this reason, it is actually quite good. Like the the level one thinking is, oh, I'm going to get their echo, which you're most of the time you're not. We we rarely pass priority with it in our graveyard. Um, so then you would think, well, I shouldn't be bringing it in because that's a smart thing to do. But you will be able to hit our LEDs. Storm is five. Um, so we can play Bergy, or would we rather play? I think, I think it might be Horn. Yep. All right, so imprint the Shatter Skull. Does it matter? Yeah, imprint. Yeah, I would keep echoing truth. We will have access to blue. You, you, you want to play both of these, or do you want to keep the opal around to discard? Or, um, I would play it, and I would pass. Nice. Okay, so we have an Echoing Truth. That's going to be the start of our next turn, most likely, is discarding that. Oh, wow. Didn't uh, even waste us. All right, so we just discard this Fiery Outlet. Yeah. Okay, Um, we can hard cast the Echo. Six. Yeah, you might as well discard the Echoing Truth. Yep. And that's going to be the ball game. Well... One of the innings. One of the innings of the ball game. Yes. <laughs> the the classic expression. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's gonna be one of the innings of the ball game. Have you ever considered being a sports commentator, Tony? Uh, uh I mean <laughs> if this isn't a uh resume for it, I don't know what what is. All right, Horn. Honestly, I just want more mana for Burning Wish. Wow, once again, that effing Simeon Spirit Guide. All right, let's get rid of this grid. Gamble. Promox still. So we do have Wish in our deck, so we don't have to worry too much about more Surgicals, especially since they just, they just used one here. But, yeah, I think I'd hit one of the Burning Wishes next. We could consider... Well, if we go Chrome Mox, Imprint Burning Wish, Rite of Flame, Petal, we only have one mana. Uh, and there's no LED to get with Gamble. Um, I'm just trying to think through if we can get to something out of the sideboard with Burning Wish. Uh, but I feel or like... Or if we, we can just... If we can just re -ac Or no, no, no. Did they... I'm sorry, I can't see too well it's like smaller on my screen so they surgical our echoes our main deck echoes and our diamonds yes that's what, what they did um but we can we still have echo on the board so if we one two you can probably discard the right of flame here because it only makes one mana yeah we had another right that was really good um so i, I want to discard the we know um hold on so if we I go pedal the burning wish. So if we go pedal right, that makes three. Grim is four. Chromox is five. That's just short. Alright, so let's discard the burning wish. And a, a an opal. So, so that now we have a we have a burgy. So you can go opal right of flame. Play burgy. Red of Flame, and then the Bergster. And, and then you could play the Chrome Mox to see if they have um, whatever that 
We're not in printing, right? That just makes sense. No. Um, so this point we have. So pedal would no, make two mana for the for mono. So do we think they have another surgical? Like we have another echo. I don't but think we should play around play another into, one. Yeah. So do you, do we want to ditch this grim monolith? What are you casting spells? So if we play Grim or, Monolith, I mean, maybe I'm not understanding what you're saying here. Um, because what are you like, going for? The, the pedal makes two, and we're like, we're tight on mana in our deck. Oh, we can just reforge. So we right? play Grim Monolith here. That brings us yeah. up to four mana. Um, five no. mana. Four, down five, to no, four mana. Sure. So we do have an, an empty for 18 versus D&T, which will win the game. I hate emptying. <laughs> uh, I, I'm aware, but like, I think it is the correct play. Just throwing that out there. What we're so, like, we have now we have a Bergy in play. Tony it literally wins the game. Does it though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know, it, I don't know why you hate winning. Answer me this Does it win the game right now? Passing the turn is just well. We're we're not guaranteed to pass the turn. So what we can do is we can gamble. No, I just mean in general. <laughs> well, hold on. We can still win this, so we can gamble, and then that makes no, one we, mana. No, we, we don't have any. What do you mean? Oh no! I thought we could still uh, reckless impulse. We can't. No. We if uh, the Simeon Spirit guy didn't suck, we could do something. Could we though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna take our twenty-three power and pass the turn. Also, there's still a game three. Yes. Yeah, that's that's not the ball game. That's one inning of the ball game. <laughs> I love your sports expressions. I really do. <laughs> All right, we're just resubmitting, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Can you tell me more about sports, Tony? <laughs> you say that like I've, I am an ex-athlete. I'm just not much of a spectator these days, I will say. And I am not a baseball fan. I know you love baseball. I don't mean to, you know, offend, but I, I'm not going to say no offense. I'd say your, I mean, uh, your commentary skills are very similar to one of John Madden's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this has an answer to deafening silence but it doesn't really do a whole lot um like this hand feels like a trap to me yeah sure is uh also not good so let's just talk through this a little bit so we can bottom a shatter skull and print a shatter skull we burning wish for gamble and then we could like get to echo the hard way, but that's like a three turn line. Um, yeah, no, I think we should no. Yeah. Also pretty bad. I mean, it, we're really looking for like LED echo. LED echo plus a blue source and a void snare. But at this point we'd be going down to four. So it'd have to be exactly that at least. Yeah, we, we have to keep something that echoes. All right. Ugh. Yep. Just, yep. They're just a big old dumb nerd face. <laughs> All right. How dare they? So they have no white source no vial um, they opted to port us instead of wasteland us i'm not sure well if they had like a I... three mana creature it could make sense but i don't know oh yeah that's true if we could draw something to relay here we could get back in uh not quite not quite the something i meant no nope. we're getting there though I mean, we are close to being back in this. Take a Lotus Petal here or a Chromox. 
Are you even Lion's Eye Diamond? No, of course. We have to pass. Ooh, opponent going to clean up. We could. Well, I don't there think we it's go. Necessary. That's pretty good. Um, so that gives us mana, two mana. We're just short still. We could risk it on a gamble. We could, yeah, we could like gamble for a, um, like a, a pedal mox. I think it'd be better as a pedal because with chrome mox, it can get awkward depending on what you discard. Uh, no, because we'd still have two red cards to imprint aside from relay and stays in play. I'm not sure if it, I mean, do we, do we want to do it though? I mean that I, I, like we could wait. They don't have a white source. And now if we draw into like void snare or echoing truth, it's really good. But they might actually, if they draw any land, they'll probably waste us and then port us, and then we'll be in the same spot. Or so, white land into waste Thalia. Yeah. I think we should do something while we yeah, can. Yeah, let's, let's do it. I, I Personally, I do like Chromox more. It turns on our Opal. Well, I mean, so does Petal. But I think it's just better with Relay. Okay, that's fine. So now we imprint the Spirit Guide. I think that was honestly like pretty close to best possible outcome. I mean, yeah. it, it wasn't perfect, but like I'll definitely take that. All right, really for six. With seven mana on board. Echoing truth. Whew. Nice. Ah, uh, they drew their white source. There she is. Okay. Can you pop it out? Because I can't. I really will see once it. Uh, we see what's we can play. So there it is. Okay. All right. So ancient tomb into echoing truth off the opal, and then these are what we have to work with, plus this opal. Um, so I think we're supposed to bergy first. So that we don't lose a mana as long as we have enough. Wow, and we drew LED. So now we definitely Bergy first. All right, so Ancient Tomb, play the Bergy. Um, it's worth noting we can't cast Echoing Truth after Bergy. We can. Oh, oh no, the... no. Uh, I guess we'd play Opal and then pay for it, and then that makes one off. Okay, I see. Or just play the LED from our hand, and then you can use the LED. Um, no, that doesn't work. What do you mean? Oh, I see you're sacking the L. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's late. It's almost midnight. We're over here playing the Epic Gamble. <laughs> All right, so add three blue. That's like every night of my life. <laughs> We're bouncing. Wait, wait. I, I was just about to ask, are we bouncing the ley line or the Thalia? Probably That's a good question. So I haven't thought of that. So we have four, five, we have Mana, I think, yeah, Thalia, because we can just. Uh... I think it's Thalia, because I think we can just like not play into, um, the ley line from here on out. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we have enough. This is, yeah, we'll have enough to cast Echo. Yeah. Especially because this Opal's gonna net some mana. Wait. Uh. Oh. Whoops. That's all right. We're yeah, I messed that up. That was poor artifact. sequencing on my part. Sorry. And you missed the blue mana too. Oh my god. They had solitude. They cast it now? Why not? It makes I mean, no sense. Fine. Thank you. Thank you for not. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think they messed that up. It. Um, so we hit void snare, which is pretty good. Um, I as think we just play something. Yeah, we just start on the impulse. Oh my! Oh, oh yeah! Oh my! Uh, so we imprint these. I think we might have enough for tendrils here. 
I haven't done the math yet. Uh, so we, we, we do. Enough. Yep. Colorless Dark Ritual. Whoops, that needs to be red. I guess it doesn't need to be, but whatever. Get that chicken tenders. Wow. Get out of here, Double DNT. post board. Boom. Getting gambled. Is this your preferred, like, piece nugget? Do you order 14 piece nuggets? I don't. That's too many. <laughs> Way too many nuggets. Um, no. One round left, Tony. One round left. All right. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. All right, the fifth and final match, and we are facing Romario Vidal who's known for playing a lot of Doomsday, but also Chalice of the Void variants. You know, they go hand in hand, Tony. How do you feel about this hand? Uh, I think it's good enough, but I'm not thrilled about it. Okay, not thrilled about it. That sounds like a keep to me. Perfect. <laughs> well, at least, like, a bad hand, I can just toss it. Like, I'm okay with, you know. I'm thrilled about seeing seven new cards. Ooh. I think we just play Shatter Skull and then... Actually, I think we go get Grid this turn. Let's make it look like we're TES a little bit. Play out the Volk. Then Gamble. Because I think that they're on Doomsday. Yeah, but I... Oh, fuck. Always in Tomb. Always in tomb. What? Maybe it's not. That's pretty good. So you just, just like double echo? Well, we can't. Oh, yeah, we could threaten. Uh, Prismatic Vista. So that takes them off of being Doomsday, correct? Correct. That's why. I think they're the blue control deck. So that's why I said double echo. Unless you want to try to outvalue them with reckless impulse. Yeah, I th I think I'd go with an impulse. Okay. For what it's worth, I think I like the double echo line so we don't lose to Narset or Hull Breacher. Yeah, but, but we don't necessarily. I know we've been losing to it tonight, but we can. We can grind our way out of those cards a lot of the time. All right, let's take a draw. Grim Monolith. Okay, nice. defense grid. And then either way, we just play this impulse from exile. Yeah. Between Jace. Definitely not Doomsday. Reckless Impulse. Yeah, I forgot that Simeon's also bad with a Reckless Impulse. Yeah, the the Exile effects. Yeah. Okay. It's a Hull Breacher? It's an Underground Sea. Yeah, yeah it's it a is. Breacher. Alright, yes. LED down. So they're the Grixis deck. We could just play a monkey right here. Just throwing that out there. We could, and we probably should. Some serious monkey business. I think this Grim Monolith might wind up coming into play. I was expecting you to say it's already in play, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, no fun. <laughs> All right, so would you just untap Monolith this turn, or would you Impulse? Yeah, four cards. This thing's going to flip on their turn. Doesn't have haste, right? It does not. No. Probably untap Monolith. Okay, so we're going to pass the turn. No! Oh, no! <laughs> 
a little surprised they didn't uh, bolt it main phase and then attack. So I think that means that they might have a force of uh, negation in hand. Yeah, or at least they want to represent it, or they they don't want to tap themselves up, themselves under grid either. This is like sanctuary. They have three cards in hand. But All right, let's on top. Interesting. To represent lethal. We have to, yeah. Uh oh. Impulse. Okay. <laughs> They're at 16. We're actually just dead if they force this. Yeah. But if they don't, we're actually in a pretty decent spot. Switching Narset. Yeah. All right. We're dead. D D. Okay, so that was a bummer. How do we board? Do we just say ship it back? Like that's what I would guess here. We don't really want yeah. empty versus the uh Hitsuku's deck. I've definitely been beating up on this deck too. Having said that, I haven't played against it in like maybe a week. Have they been playing more Narset effects? Like as uh -oh. of late? No, I think it's still the seven that most of these control decks are playing. I do think it's like a little boring how every control deck in the format now is now a uh, a nurse out wheel deck. Like it's just not that exciting. Yeah. All right, on the play. This is awkward. We have to ship this. Yeah, close. Going to five. All right, Mulligan. All right, so right. this is turn one, Echo with the Grid, putting back double Grim Monolith. I think we put back Monolith, at least. I guess you could put back Lotus Petal, but I'd rather have Petal. Yep, me too. I want them to think that Grid is okay to resolve. What are the odds the last two are LED Echo? 100 percent storm five what all right double force bs okay it's step one let's uh draw lines our diamond now actually if we draw a red source we can echo next turn yep Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Uh we just have to pass here. Well, it would have put us into a 50-50. Let's hope they thought sees us again. Right. Draw. Alright. <laughs> We're not gonna say it, Tony. We're not going to say it, okay? Got um. Don't say it. Echo. Okay, it was not whole breacher. That was the nope. big thing there. Those were some pretty good draws. Echo on the stack. We deserved it after getting double forced. Um, I think we just play grid here. Yep. And another brainstorm. All right, so assuming that the grid resolves, how are you playing the rest of this? Are you pitching the Simeon Spirit Guide to Chrome Box? Yeah, and then playing Rite of Flame and then casting Impulse. We don't want to play completely into Hidetsugu if we don't have to. At the same time, it would be insane to not like move forward here. Yeah. Right, Rite of Flame. We really want to see a relay. Or winning the game. Or, you know, I... No, I wanted to see a relay, all right? This is bullshit. You heard it here first. Tony Scaponi hates winning the game. <laughs> Exclusive the Epic Storm content. I'm just sick of it, you know? You just want to dirtle all the time. 
Just... You know, I heard there's a podcast for that if you ever want to try to get on it. <laughs> Bad jokes. All right, game number three. Submit. So I love how you're saying that you're you're happy that this deck is fast so that, you know, maybe we could have a fast league and then we just queued into a bunch of grindy blue decks. I'm falling asleep over here, Tony. It is late. <laughs> I'm tired. Show must go on. If I fall asleep before we put a lethal uh, storm spell on the stack, I do not take any responsibility. <laughs> you imagine that it's for the five zero like final game. All right. You you even cast it. You just don't do all the clicking. Wow, this is a turn one pure with backup. Pretty good. Uh, I think it's one shy. Oh, it doesn't matter. Life is meaningless. Oh, come on. Vought sees plus all 12 forces they play and whole breacher Nursa. Oh, so they just like have force in hand. That's the only reason they would do that. Oh my, we ripped hey, it. Hey, hey. Got him. Wow. So now we can do the play that I wanted to do before. Which is burning with Shreko, burning with, yeah. Yeah. So it's important here to play out the LEDs first, because if you don't, you're weak to surgical. Because if you just cast Burning Wish there, it gets forced. Then you play LED, LED. Yeah. They can surgical. For sure. <laughs> the second we started casting spells, you know, he was like, no, <laughs> what did he draw? So they have to force this. And then that six, seven, eight off oh, or one shy of lethal. I mean, they might let it resolve knowing that the best thing we can get is Echo. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. All right. And then what's Burning Wish? Sacrifice this for three red. And I mean, we don't have to cast this Echo. We can just see what happens here with the Burning Wish. Yeah, we don't... Yeah. Wow. So they must not have had a Force. I don't... Or they're just saving the Force for the Echo. I mean, I would still... I mean, well, let's see what the... Yeah, because if it reveals a grid... Can you pop that out just so I can see it? I don't know what... So the Wishes so... are not in there. Right, starts at Bergy. We have a land drop. Uh, I guess we want this LED. We probably, yeah, we just pass. All right, five cards left in the opponent's hand. Do we think they left in Lightning Bolt? Mm. Probably not. Deck probably plays what two of them? I think they probably Maybe. play the full four. It doesn't. I don't know. I haven't did these new Grixis lists in any like serious capacity. Kind of glanced at them. Like yeah, Grixis stuff. Hidetsugu. Bad draw. Um. Yeah, for sure. So could gamble yep. for grid. I don't think so. I I, I think this Bergy is effectively a grid. They have to counter it. Or yeah, I guess if they have bolt, it's not like. But we can still play, make the gamble play, in that case. The god of storytelling. He tells a mean story. Let me tell you. Horse Bergy. So I yeah, I think that's actually a pretty good play. I am nervous um, about something here. I think we just have to jam. Yep. Um, I don't really want to say it out loud. Is it going to happen? It is. We're getting pyroblasted. 
actually surprised. I don't know why they why he thought so long about it. I would have thought he didn't have it. Uh, that's a bummer. Beck has a lot of interaction. Two cards left in their hand. That doesn't matter. Having said that, that was a pretty bad relay. It was. All right, past the turn. We're losing double right of flame in here. Hmm. It had three lands in it, and then we drew a land? That is correct. In a 11 land deck. I'd say overall, just generally speaking, throughout this league, we've rolled pretty low. Well, I mean, I'm the one casting Gamble. Uh, just throwing that yeah. out there. We have to pass the I turn. was, like, not even talking about Gamble either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot so, about those. Uh, I'll point this out. I've yet to see somebody die from the 10 damage thing. I feel like it could actually happen here, and I'm not excited about it. Um, no, it's all in one turn, though. No. Okay, so, I, yeah. This turn. This turn. Oh, okay. That, so it's like... Okay, I thought it was like three, so then four, four then case. five. And then it was like, game it over. Would make, it would make more sense if it didn't have trample, because it's like you can't just endlessly jump block it. But it has trample. So would you relay for three here, or would you just hold? I feel like and we should hold. Cards. You think so? I think so, but... I mean, this realistically, is we're only getting, what, one, two more draws? Before it's like, and they're also getting two more draws. I think on average, in one or two draws, it's going to get better for them than it is for us. Okay. If they didn't have a threat on board, I'd probably like be on the, you know, wait four or five turns plan. All right. Relay for three. Also, it'd be less appealing if it were all rituals, but we get this pedal. Simeon Opal Islet. Okay. Hole Breacher. Jumper, Dead Opal. Oh, wow. Not looking good. So we're taking six. Now they have Lethal next turn. Well, you can play the... Well, kind of have a blocker. I mean, it, I, it, we have to tap Ancient Tomb, so it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically it could hold back Hole Breacher. I'd say, like, Gamble is probably our best draw here. So, do we want to use the Spirit Guide and pay one life? Does it matter? Six. I think what uh, happens is they probably just attack with this and they don't three, attack with the Breacher. Two. Doesn't really let us tap our Ancient Tomb next time anyways. Right. So we take four, we'd go to three. I don't yeah. think it matters. All oh, right, then we get to block. Your... Okay. So we'll be able to tap our Ancient Tomb. That's good news. So we still just want to draw Gamble. Uh, I don't think we can tap our Ancient Tomb. So they don't attack with Hull Breacher. We block here. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, yeah. Never two. mind. My bad. We're doing Rite of Flame. Also, why is Gamble a good draw? Oh, yeah, Hull Breacher is in play. <laughs> because Hull Breacher is in play. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, one, two... Mm, I'm not sure there is a draw. So... No, that wouldn't do it either. I don't think we have an out. All right, so we're going to block the vessel. I guess 
No, that wouldn't make sense either. Okay. Gamble. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Oh, I was going to draw a card off the eyelet, but uh, that, that's not a good idea with the whole breacher in play. Now, here's the question. Does he let it go? <laughs> no, he doesn't even let it go. What a jerk. All what right. a jerk. So, Tony, unfortunately, this was a three and two. I will say this. Our matchups yes. tonight felt pretty difficult uh, compared to some other times that we've played this deck. Um, do you have any thoughts after the league on the 75? Um, yeah, I mean, we we rolled low and we played against a ton of Hull Breacher and Narset. Um, we didn't have the greatest openers uh, against Blue. And I, I mean, it happens sometimes, right? I, I'd say if you want if you wanted to divide openers into like half for this deck, like in two different uh, categories, it's good against blue and good against non-blue. And, it, you know, we kind of drew more explosive, like all in hands against, against blue. Okay. Or just awful hands, which isn't as bad against non-blue, right? Like if you, if you open up garbage and you're against non-blue, it's not as big a deal. Cause we have, we can just mold down to led echo. But you don't have that luxury all the time against blue. So admittedly, Simeon Spear Guide, at least in my opinion, was sort of awkward throughout the league. Are you still confident in its choice in the deck? I am, yes, because Jessica's will is also very awkward and has been. Okay. It's I mean it's great off of the echo, but usually at those points we're winning. I'm just not I'm not happy with um ten three drops. As much mana as the deck makes, as nice as it is, uh, you know, having the soul lands, it's it's been awkward. You know, it's the card that I board out like most of the time. I do have one observation from this league. And that's without Jessica's will, I think getting to Peer in the Abyss became a lot more difficult. Uh we, before we went live, you were talking about how the cyborg feels really tight on slots. I would just like to point out that if it continues to feel like you're always coming up short on peer, and I know it's blasphemy to say this, but you could start looking at peers. Uh, hey, maybe my deck's too low to the ground now for peer into the abyss. It might not be, but I just figured it's worth mentioning. No, yeah, we accumulate a lot of mana, especially with the grim monoliths. Uh, a lot of times it's not like the whole turn one thing it's just we have soul lands in play and we top deck a burning wish and then okay we sack an led you know yep fair enough so tony where can people find you once again uh once again you can find me at the epic com. i have a couple articles one of which was pretty recent month and a half ago on this very deck it's a you could call it a pretty in-depth uh primer and you can also find me, my YouTube, my Twitch. I'm Tony Scaponi on either of those. You can just search me and you can find me lurking in the Storm Discord. Well, Tony, thanks for coming to hang out. This was a lot of fun. I'm sorry we got breached a bunch, but it was a blast casting Red of Flame in a different deck. I agree. All right. <laughs> thanks and for having me. Of course. Everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you have a terrific day. See you next time. Hey. Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.